In an, if it's an internal tribunal for public servants, that's no different than serving in the military. They don't, they don't even have to have anything against you. They can just punish you. They do that. Insubordination. You looked at an officer the wrong way. We're going to punish you. We're going to charge you with obstructing a peace officer just because you looked. I didn't like the way you looked at me. Well, that's how it works in that world. And that's one of the best reasons to never be a public servant. Right? So um, that's summary convictions. We just kind of went over what that all is. Anybody have any questions, anything else about that? No, well, I was thinking, well, of course, maybe apply more to Queen's Bench. I'm not sure. But, you know, you're, you're often arrested. You're given a promise to appear. You sign yep. it under duress. Yep. You're marking it as under duress or whatever. So you've usually got three weeks to a month before you're supposedly. There are sometimes you're dragged in right away. Yeah. And the problem is we're not, telling, we're not letting these people know who we are when we're getting pulled over. So if you want to start dealing with things at the side of the road, um, the minute you get pulled over and detained, yeah, especially if you, uh, if you don't want to produce a driver's license, um, destroying presumptions, removing presumptions of any kind. We spoke about that last class, and that's the whole idea that when you, when you walk up, you know, uh, you guys all invited me out for dinner. We went to a big restaurant. There's 10 of us sitting down at a table, and every single one of us is sitting there eating, wondering, who's paying for this? And no one talks about it. Everybody just eats. And then people start getting up and leaving, and you end up being the last guy at the table going, oh, shit, I guess it was me, right? It probably would have been a good idea to address that when you first got there or when they even called you to go for dinner that night. <laughs> hey, Dean, you want to come over for dinner? Yeah, you know what? That's a great idea. Um, who's paying? Well, I thought we'd all pay for our own meals. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll see you guys down there, right? I like those terms. That sounds pretty good. So get the terms out there right at the outset, right from the first contact, right? Remove presumptions. You show up for dinner. You're sitting down. You order your meal, you're having a beer. Hey, so what are we all doing? Are we gonna, are we gonna all pay for our own meals? Is uh, one guy gonna pay? How, you know, you know, get it out there before it comes down to the bill time. And everyone's, well, I thought he was gonna pay. Well, I thought you were gonna pay for mine. You know, well, you invited me, you should be paying. You know, none of that kind of nonsense. And that's how you should be dealing. Yes? Well, without getting into media commentary, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was gonna bring beer. Um, nice. Uh, summary conviction court. Um, Unless you've done something criminal wrong, uh, there's no reason to plea. You never have to plea, ever. And that is, uh, what is that, 7062 of the Criminal Code of Canada under summary convictions. I think if uh, my book's around here, hang on, I'll look it up right now and I'll read it to you. Uh, let me see if I've got it. Right there. Oops, sorry. There's two real gems in here that I'm going to teach people that if you just were to bring up these two in court, if you wanted to go, there's no reason to go to court. Send it into the courthouse in writing with a motion before the court, long before you have to, have to show up there, it won't be there anymore. And just let them know you're not going to be coming. And if you want, you can remove the presumption right at the outset and say, I think the summary convictions is for public servants. And I've never seen any evidence that, that, or claims that I am a public servant. So I don't think I'll be showing up at your, at your internal tribunal. I mean, just write it out. Send it in. What, what's that going to harm you? There's no worse than any of the other arguments I've heard people make when they go to court. Yep. I've, well, uh, negative averments are always nice too, right? I have not seen any facts or been provided with any evidence that I am a public servant and I believe no such evidence exists. Write that down. Yeah. Send it in with a motion to dismiss. What are they going to do? Yeah. You submit that by mail or you do Absolutely. I don't even go down there. I mail it into them. So, because we all know what kind of attention we get when we go down to those wickets at 100D or, uh, you know, the, the, the Broadway one there, too, and, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, geez, no, you know what? It's a different... Ah, oh, geez, I'm going to have to look it up afterwards anyways, but it has to do with uh, pleas. And you'll notice, again, in the criminal code, there's nothing in here about Queen's Bench. Nothing. It's all summary conviction and trials. I have a book like that at home. Nothing. Summary conviction only. Well, if this was a criminal code to do with Canada in general, wouldn't this have Queen's Bench or anything else in it? It doesn't. It's only got penalties, which take up, I might add, about three quarters of the book. Penalties for failure to obey these codes when you're a public servant. That's more so what it is. Okay. And then uh, what is it? What is the most? There's a couple in here. I'm gonna. I'll, we'll have a break later, and I'll, I'll think. I'll look up the names of the two codes that I'm thinking of right now. And the other one is basically. You are not compelled to enter a plea at all. A trial cannot commence until the plea has been made. Period. No plea, no trial, which is where the court tries to open to enter one for you. Right? And all you have to do is say, I, I don't allow you to enter a plea for me. Period. 
There's not going to be any plea. I haven't seen a claim made against me yet. I will not enter a plea until I see a claim made against me. And they're all, they're all the bluster and the nonsense and everything else, it's all irrelevant. Because the other thing we talked about last time is another thing people don't understand or realize is that with all the nonsense that's going on in the court and everybody thinks that every time they get up and they're saying, you know, this, that, the whole nine yards and, uh, you know, my transcripts from last time say this and uh, you take the stand and you, you testify on the stand, uh, you, you give stuff to the, the, to the Crown and you send stuff in and everything, evidence and all your, your nonsense, you and the Crown trade back and forth. None of that actually happened. None of it. There's nothing on the court record. Summary convictions is not a court of record at all. Why do you think they call it summary convictions? Okay, There is a way to get things on the, on the record, but for the most part, how many people have gotten a transcript of one of their trials? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, other than the fact that half of the stuff has been deleted, what's, yeah. the, what's the more important part? The things that are changed. Not the things that are changed even. It even gets more so sinister than this. Like the, the title who's saying what? Not even that. No? Who says it's on the record? It says this is a transcript of a record. Does it say court record? record. No. Yeah. Record. Did the transcript come from the court? Sometimes. No. When you go and you order that transcript at their little window, they come from a different it comes from a private transcript company. It's not a matter of public record. It's a record. Well, big deal. I keep a record in one of my books over there of everything I do during the day. When I go to the job site, what the hell does that prove? Nothing. One of the, one of the biggest things that, you know, you got to remember, everything's all about concealing and, and lying to you and making sure the truth has been concealed as much as possible or you're just confused like you actually believe that this transcript you got is a, is a court record because you went and you ordered it from the, from the window. Yeah, it got a little dark in here. <laughs> so that's one big problem also because number one, people don't know how to, how to get their paperwork, their affidavits into the court file, the public court file and then just because they went and got a copy of the transcripts, see it's right on the transcripts! Look at, look at that! And they just went ahead and ruled against me anyways, right? The judge doesn't have a copy of that transcript, never happened. Came from a private company. It's a service that's provided so that you and the Crown have access to what happened, which keeps it private between the parties. Everything that court is doing, they're trying to keep it private between the parties. They don't want the judge to see any evidence except the original complaint. And that's why they have a 97% conviction rate. Because the only thing in that court file by the end, if you have a lawyer that just worked for you for three years, number one, your lawyer didn't file one motion in the court, not one. I've seen it. Not only that, the transcripts aren't a matter of public record. The whole thing never happened. On the books, the only thing that happened was there was a complaint and a conviction. That's it. That's the sad reality of it. So all the arguments you're, arguments you're making in court are almost irrelevant as well until you actually are able to make it a court of record, which it's not. They don't even pretend it is, and that's why your transcripts even say this is a transcript of a record, of a record. Well, again, you see it's, it's, it's all about deceiving you. That's pretty sad when you think that you've got this transcript that you ordered from a court window at a courthouse. When you finally get it, turns out the tape was sent to a private company who made the transcripts and then made it available to you and the Crown but it's not actually a matter of the court record. And that's why the first uh, transcripts to a court record or whatever are so much, whereas if you order it after somebody else orders it... They're free. So yeah, because they've already been done. And that tells me that the transcripts were never made until you ordered them. So if they're never even made until you order them, how could they possibly be on the record? Yeah. Right? And even once you do order them, they're still not on the record, even though it's a verified copy from a, from a licensed uh, transcriber. So it's not, I, we just realized this the other week. We got thinking about it, and they're like, man, we're like, look at these trans, look at the stuff going on here. How could, how could they get away with this? And we're doing the same frustrated thing everybody else is doing. And I just sat there and went, well, wait a minute. How, how do we even know if this is even on the record? I mean, yeah, sure, they gave us a, a, a printout, a, a typing up of all the, everything that happened in the court, but... It looks like everything that they're doing is trying to, is the judge sits up there for three days and just kind of looks at you and just, and just laughs and watches the bantering going back and forth between you and the crown. And it's all irrelevant because it's all kept in the private. Not anything is on the record. 
which means the entire the argument is held completely private until the time where the judge says, oh, well, I'm going to have to convict you on the facts because, you know what, uh, the only thing in my court file is the, uh, is the complaint. On the record, you haven't offered up one rebuttal to anything that went on, period. Especially if you hire a lawyer. That's the sad part. Is this a big distinction between pleading <clears throat> guilty to the charges and guilty or guilty to the facts? Yeah, like I said, I tried pleading guilty to the facts one time for, for three days in a row. I tried pleading guilty to the facts. After and every time it was, Mr. Clifford, if you're going to plead guilty, it's with the understanding you've done something wrong. And I got up and I said, well, I've done nothing wrong, so I guess I'm just going to go sit down again. The end of the three days, well, I'm going to have to uh, find you guilty uh, to the facts. He's like, well, thank you. I've, I've been trying to plead that for three days now, right? It doesn't prove guilt. In fact, even the word guilt, uh, guilty or not guilty, what is that even, uh, is that, does that mean you think you didn't do what they're claiming you didn't do? Or does that mean you actually feel guilty about it or not? Right? I mean, there's that argument alone. I wouldn't even get into that one. That's more of a philosophical debate than anything, right? Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, okay, well, you know, I, well, I don't think I did what this guy says I did. But, but even if I did, I, I probably wouldn't feel guilty about it because I really don't think there was anything wrong with what I did. Yeah, exactly. So lots of fun stuff you can do with summary convictions. So what we're finding now is it's a lot more fun when you start filing motions into summary convictions and affidavits. And we started doing that back in the fall anyways, and uh, that's, that's when the fun things started happening, summary convictions, because when you send it down there now with instructions to make sure that it gets into the court file, and I find you mail it in, do whatever you want with instructions that it gets into the court file, um, send instructions to also get a certified copy back out. Because if they don't give you a certified copy back out, you're going to find that it probably disappears from the court file as well. There's nothing honorable about anything they do in summary convictions. It's not a court of record. You have to make them accountable, and that's proof. So if you go down to that window 100D, and they're refusing, refusing to file an affidavit into, your, into, your, uh, into the court file, 100D, which they do. We actually had that happen, what, three, three four weeks ago. The guy working at the counter said, nope. He goes, nope, we don't know. That's, that's not a court document. We're not going to take that. It's summary convictions. There is no, no forms. It's not Queen's Bench, they don't accept forms. And if an affidavit doesn't go in a court file, what the hell does go in a court file? Now that we know the transcripts aren't there, your affidavit's not there, technically you didn't even say anything on the record at all in your defense, the only thing left in there is a, is a, is a complaint against you from someone that's not even certified, it's just a complaint. It's not, it's not an affidavit, nothing. So that's the problem we're having in summary conviction, it's just uh, lifting, lifting the fog of everything they're doing there and keeping everything private. It's kept very, very private to the point, like I say, where the only thing left in the judge's file probably would be whatever arrest warrant they had for you, maybe the original complaint, and then definitely your conviction. Yeah? I was under the impression that if you get a ticket from a police officer, that ticket is like an affidavit. Um, no, it's, it's not, it doesn't have the effect of an affidavit. Number one, you probably noticed as well, even though we haven't actually found a lot of the references for this in law, um, the cop's signature is boxed off the document. And then the information he writes is boxed off the document, and all the other information is boxed off. And there's certain parts that are open to the rest of the document and everything else. So we already know that, number one, uh, I would expect that to be a flimsy excuse from them if you ever then took them to Queen's Bench and sued them for damages. They'd be like, oh, well, what are you talking about? I don't see his signature on this document. You know, it's, uh, it's boxed out of there. But you think that's an honest... Um, Absolutely not. Like, boxed off, like, uh, this... Just uh, the perception of a document. If something boxed off, it doesn't really exist, or it's another legal. If document. it's if it's boxed off, it has nothing to do with the body of the document. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's basically like its own page within a page. So what does it mean? The document's kind of meaningless. But I'm sure they'll take it on face value in their own court, and right. probably choose to ignore it in other places well, wherever it suits them. Right? This is something that we can include, and I know that you don't endorse this. I don't endorse it. This is something that we can include in our claim of right for a notice of understanding this. Here's what I think. Yep. <laughs> can you prove me wrong? I think another thing, too, is uh, one of the other points I want to go over with people is uh, the method in dealing with this stuff. Because everybody's going in there and they're getting mad at the judges, you know, and they're getting mad at the court. And they're challenging the, the, the court's jurisdiction. Yeah. So you walk in there and you, you challenge the court's jurisdiction. Okay, well, number one, the court can't hear a jurisdictional